Aloha everyone. I want to respond to a presentation Alan Musk just recently did where he's pushing this concept of a neural link and he actually displayed a prototype of it that they are using now in pigs and it's about the size of a, a, a large coin and you implant it into the head and under the skull and it connects with the brain tissue and then it transmits out to radio receivers. So Musk is proposing this as a great way of re helping people who have uh, very serious uh, physical disabilities, paraplegia and, and other mental brain issues that might require that kind of extraordinary intervention. But we need to just keep open here to the idea that this is not merely a device that is intended to just help people with severe medical issues and physical problems that they are having. Uh, what we are having here is the rollout for something called transhumanism. And Elon Musk is a big proponent of transhumanism. He has said in the past, and he actually says um, in this presentation, that uh, tr transhumanism, where we become linked up with the internet, become linked up with advanced electron, electronic storage devices, that this is how we are going to be able to combat artificial intelligence. And for a long time now, uh, Musk has positioned himself as an advocate of transhumanism in response to those like Ray Kurzweil over at Google who are promoting artificial intelligence and promoting the singularity point, that point somewhere in the future where you're going to have self-replication occurring for artificial intelligence and humanity isn't going to be uh, so important for that. And that raises all sorts of uh, particular problems. So what we have here is kind of like a, a false dichotomy because really it, it's not about transhumanism versus artificial intelligence. It's not really about, you know, should we evolve into becoming cyborgs because that's the only way we're going to combat artificial intelligence. We're really looking at two ways in which uh, human 2.0 is uh, socially engineered and genetically modified and upgraded electronically to something that for proponents of transhumanism is, is really the, the way forward and so that we can live side by side with AI. And no question about it, AI is coming. I mean, you, can't, you cannot ignore the evolution of AI. There's a really good book that I recommend, uh, written by Dr. Kai Fu Li. It's called AI Superpowers, China versus Silicon Valley. And I'll, I'll put reference to it in the description to this video so you can go look it up along with the link to Elon Musk's original interview. So in that, we are presented with this vision of the future. And when we're talking about 2030 as being the time when uh, AI really takes off, uh, especially in China, where China becomes the dominant power on the planet in terms of the development and the rollout of artificial intelligence. And we're, we're all going to be part of this Internet of Things. This is, this is the future you know, with the 5G networks that they are putting up there now with uh, uh, Starlink and, and China has Baidu and there are many other companies that are launching satellites to set up this 5G global system that is coming our way. And so you're going to have this Internet of Things where you know, the, the, the 5G gigahertz frequency is being used. Uh, to relay information at speeds that were unimaginable, say, a decade ago. And so this will make possible this Internet of Things. And, of course, by Internet of Things, you think automatically of smart TVs, uh, your smartphones, uh, refrigerators, smart meters, and so forth. Well, we are also part of that Internet of Things, uh, humans. Uh, this is really one of the main goals, especially in China, in rolling out AI, 5G, is so that you could actually have this Internet of Things where humans are being monitored uh, by 5G, uh, by uh, facial recognition, voice recognition technologies, where our 
posting behavior on social media is closely monitored. And of course, with China, you have the, the social credit system being rolled out. And, and that's a prototype for the rest of the planet. So we, we really need to be very mindful of this. This is what many proponents of AI want, is to really have a system set up where you can increasingly have uh, computer learning, AI, where 5G brings in sufficient amounts of data so that the IA can, can monitor everything, can monitor humans and begin to regulate them and, and make sure that any troublemakers, uh, that their social credit scores uh, are affected and so they can't do basic things like travel, get jobs, do courses and, and communicate with others. So the future is, is not looking very bright as we go down this path of AI, 5G networks and the Internet of Things taking off. And so we need to be mindful that those who propose us linking in to this system, like Musk's idea of just having brain implants, that incredibly, you know, people are finding that very popular. And, and in this book by Kai Fu Lee, he describes that in the future, people will be doing this kind of thing where they willingly have brain implants installed into them so that they can be competitive in the marketplace. Because you can imagine if you have a brain implant where you are hooked into the internet at all times, you know, you go in for a job application or you're doing a job assignment somewhere, uh, you're going to have an advantage over the person who doesn't have that implant. And of course, there's going to be a social dynamic here where more and more people get these brain implants so that you can be competitive, and of course, this is just going to play directly into the transhumanist agenda where people like Elon Musk are saying that this is the way of the future. This is how we need to adapt to the coming AI singularity point. People like Kurzweil are going to say that this is just uh, one, one of the steps along this path to the singularity point. And so we have to ask ourselves, is there a solution? Is there an alternative to this? Is there a third way? Now, of course there is. But what is that third way? Well, unfortunately, you're not being told the third way because it is something that is wrapped up in classified programs. And it has a lot to do with secret space programs. It has a lot to do with extraterrestrial life. Now, this is not something new. Well, what we are facing now as a civilization with uh, the internet, with the evolution of 5G, the emergence of the Internet of Things, transhumanism, AI. This is not new. We have had this kind of thing happen, not only in our distant history, in our past, but also on many other worlds, extraterrestrial worlds. And this is information that is being kept from us so that we cannot make an informed choice about how to respond to this. So when someone like Elon Musk comes along and says, well, we, you know, we need to do this, we need to have the brain implants put in here into our brain so that we can, we can uh, compete with AI and we can then can become competitive with others in a really very competitive marketplace that is emerging now, that the neural link is what's going to save us, that that's... That's really just very limited information and, and it really is playing into the hands of the deep state, the transhumanists and, and those that want to promote this singularity point. Because really, I don't think there's such a big difference between what Musk says in terms of his transhumanist agenda and, and what people like Ray Kurzweil are saying in terms of artificial intelligence. They're, they're, they're part of the same movement, two branches of the same movement towards a greater reliance on technological solutions to the problems that we face as physical beings uh, in this earth. And But there is another way, and that other way is full disclosure, and that means we really need to start paying attention to all of the information that people have been putting out about secret space programs, about extraterrestrial life, learn how others not only in our distant past, earlier civilizations, but also how extraterrestrial civilizations have dealt with these problems and the solution will emerge from that. And hopefully that will inspire some of you to dive deeper into the literature. I've got a, a five 
volume series of books on the secret space programs that takes you right into this. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, it really is important. We can no longer ignore this. We really need to start paying attention, telling uh, loved ones and others that you know this is coming. You cannot sit on the fence. You cannot just say, well, show me the evidence, show me the evidence you know, for UFOs, extraterrestrial life. I mean, you need to see what is being rolled out and, and people, if we're not careful, we might find ourselves being forced to go down this path of transhumanism. It might not be the, the full brain implant to begin with. It might start off more innocuously as some sort of uh, vaccine, but it'll be a stepping stone to the full brain implant. And, and we are unfortunately being forced into that all around the world in response to uh, what many of us are dealing with in these, in these lock, lockdowns, mandatory face masks and so forth. We are being mandated by law to do things against our will. So don't think for a second that the idea of some kind of transhumanist Trojan horse is going to be rolled out, whether it's through a vaccine or whether it's through an implant, it'll be rolled out. And don't think that they can't force you to do it because we're seeing it now. People who would never have believed that they would have been forced to wear a mask or, or do things that we are being expected to do now with the, with the lockdowns wouldn't have believed that that would be possible. But now it's happening. So pay attention, explore the literature on full disclosure, and hopefully the solution pops out for you. I'm Michael Sala. Thank you for listening and subscribing to my YouTube channel.